I'm Jacob Hornberger, president of the Future of Freedom Foundation. On the afternoon of November 22, 1963, one of the most remarkable occurrences in the history of U.S. criminal justice occurred in Dallas, Texas. President Kennedy had just been declared dead. And the medical examiner of Dallas County began preparations to conduct an autopsy, which was required by Texas law. At that time, it was not a federal offense to assassinate a president, but Texas law required that in any homicide case, and this was a Texas homicide case, a murder case, an autopsy was absolutely required. Now, what is an autopsy? It's a proce medical procedure by which a pathologist does an examination of the deceased body to determine the cause of death. What were the entry points for the bullets? What were the exit points? What were the trajectory of the bullets? Which bullet actually caused the president's death? So the law requires this. Keep in mind that at this time, no suspect had been taken into custody. And so an autopsy is absolutely essential in a criminal case, or at least most criminal cases. The medical examiner becomes a witness. In fact, uh, oftentimes lawyers refer to the autopsy as the best evidence in the case, better even than eyewitnesses. So it's, it's that important that the medical examiner conduct that examination. And that's why the law required him to do so. But something happened. A team of Secret Service agents takes control over the president's body, places it in a casket, and tells the medical examiner, Dr. Earl Rose, that under no circumstances are they going to permit him to conduct an autopsy. This is phenomenal. I mean, they're interfering with an official procedure that the law requires, and they're obstructing it. They're refusing to let it go forward. Dr. Rose says, you're not taking this body out of here until I conduct an autopsy. Texas law requires this. They inform him that they're under orders to remove that body from that hospital and to absolutely prevent an autopsy from being done. When Dr. Rose creates a scene and, and insists that he's going to conduct this autopsy, the Secret Service agents pull back their jackets and brandish their guns and their holsters, making it very clear that if Dr. Rose continues to interfere, and there's a lot of other people there in the, in the, in the hospital watching this, if anybody interferes, they're prepared to use deadly force. That was the message. So they push their way, screaming obscenities and yelling. They push that casket out of the hospital, put it into a, a vehicle where it's then transported to Dallas Love Field. Now, who was it that gave the orders to that Secret Service team to get that casket out of there at all costs and to prevent an autopsy from being done? We don't know for certain, but in all likelihood, it's a virtual certainty that it was the new president, Lyndon Johnson, who had been elevated to the presidency upon the president's death. Because Johnson's over at Love Field, Dallas Love Field, waiting in Air Force One for the casket to be delivered. He has his people removing seats in the back of the plane. Now, he's a native Texan. Surely he knows what Texas law is with respect to the autopsy. He's indifferent. He has that autopsy, that, that body placed into the back of the plane and uh, ready to take off. Now, one of the interesting angles here is that Johnson alluded to the possibility that you know, this assassination might be a first stage in a Soviet nuclear attack on the United States. This was the height of the Cold War. There had just been the Berlin, uh, the, the, the Cuban Missile Crisis, where the, the world had come to the edge of, of nuclear war. So Johnson alluded to this, that, oh my gosh, this could be a possibility. But there he is sitting on the tarmac, waiting for this casket, and he later said, well, I wanted to be a gentleman. I didn't want to leave Dallas without Mrs. Kennedy. Uh, but Air Force Two would, was there. He could have left back a team of Secret Service agents to escort her back in, in Air Force Two after the Texas law had been complied with. And he also summons a, a federal judge to come and swear him, swear him in, even though the Attorney General, Bobby Kennedy, the deceased president's brother, had told him that it wasn't necessary. There he is, lollygagging, just taking his time on that tarmac, on that tarmac which sort of is a strong indication that he knew as a certainty that this was not the first stage of a Soviet attack. So they take the body, they put it into Air Force One, they take off, and they fly into Andrews Air Force Base in Maryland, 
where the body is placed in the hands of the U.S. military. Thank you.